Hello lions, eagles, snakes and badgers, I'm Rebecca Felgate, the sassiest Slytherin in all of the wizarding realms, and do you know what? I've decided that being a muggle isn't so bad. Who even needs the Marauders map when we have Google Maps which is arguably better? Google Maps actually allows us to experience the wizarding world of Harry Potter from the comfort of our own homes. Or basically you could experience it right now, wherever you may be, it doesn't have to be your home, it could be a school, your library, in the street, this is muggle magic. Yeah, we might not be able to apparate to Hogwarts or Honeydukes, but we can see loads of awesome places on Google Maps, so join me as we take a virtual tour of Hogwarts and we don't even need to like get in the flu network. Before we get into this video though, why don't you guys tell me your favourite Wizarding World location? I do think mine probably has to be Honeydukes because I love me some food or the Hogwarts kitchens. Yum. So first up we have number 4 Privet Drive. Now this is the place where it all began for Harry, or more accurately, began again. Harry lived with the Dursleys at number 4 Privet Drive for 11 years and then every summer holiday until he was finally able to escape to the burrow. Privet Drive was Harry's his prison, but also his safe haven. This house was the scene of a lot of action for him. His under the stairs cupboard days, his first encounter with Dobby, and his many run ins with Dudley. For Privet Drive Little Whining, Surrey is actually located at three picket posts close in Winkfield Row, England. That's kind of near Bracknell. Isn't that lovely? Can you imagine the owls sitting outside waiting to deliver Harry his Hogwarts letter? I can. Isn't it beautiful? Flu be gone, Diagon Alley is fully visible on Google Maps. The most famous shopping street in the Wizarding World is accessible via Google Maps. Absolute back of the net, I'm very excited by this. This means you can get a better look at Gringotts, Ollivanders, Flourish and Blots, and Weasley's Wizarding Wheezes, which is where I want to be. I'm so happy that Warner Brothers Studios decided to allow Google in to photograph this set because it looks incredible. I'm just, as a Slytherin, kind of gutted that Nocturne Alley isn't on the list, but you can explore Leaden Hall Market on Google Maps, which is where the Leaky Cauldron was and bits of Nocturne Alley. Next up we have Godric's Hollow, which is actually the place where it all began. Godric's Hollow is where Harry and his parents lived when he was a baby. Now this was the scene of the whole initial drama. This is where Voldemort killed Lily and James Potter and gave Harry his lightning scar. Harry didn't visit his first home until the final book, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, although we hear about it a lot. The quaint village is supposed to be in the west country of England, but Harry's home can actually be found in Lavenham in Suffolk. Now this isn't a million miles away from where my family lives, so that makes me feel even more wizarding. It was modelled here on this beauty, De Vere House. Isn't it lovely? Isn't it so quintessentially English? Exactly how I imagined Godric's Hollow to be. Woo woo! All aboard the Hogwarts Express up next, we have Platform 9 and 3 quarters. If you don't live in the UK or you can't get to London, you can check out Platform 9 and 3 quarters on Google Maps. You can also go inside the 9 and 3 quarters shop and virtually ogle all the merch. Hurrah for Slytherin hoodies! If you just want to see the rest of King's Cross Station, you can do that too. Next up, we have an actual part of the Hogwarts Express route. Those beautiful viaduct shots from the movie were taken here at Glenfinian Viaduct in the Scottish Highlands. This is this is actually pretty legit because we know that Hogwarts is in Scotland, so like actually this could be the track that the famous Scarlet Train flies along. Just watch out for the train witch. I don't feel good about the train witch. Stay away from me you long fingered wench. Ok next up we have Hogsmeade Station. You can walk up and down the platform at Hogsmeade Station, famously the last stop on the Hogwarts Express. This is very very special to me, there are so many encounters with Hagrid here, it's an emotional place for Harry. So this is actually at Gothland Station in the Scottish Highlands. Maybe this really is where Hogsmeade is, you're not going to tell the muggles where Hogsmeade is, maybe it's Gothland. Some famous Slytherin locations up next. Nobody likes property like us Slytherins, and next up we've got two very very famous Slytherin households. First we've got 12 Grimold Place. So this is famously the ancestral home of the Black family, and Sirius hides out here for many many years. I say many years, it's not really that long, but he's hiding, he's alright. The place has a lot of similarities to Four Privet Drive for Harry, it's a safe haven and a prison for the Lord Sirius. The filming location is actually Claremont Square in London, which is also in the borough of Islington, which is where the house is supposed to be, so good. Next up, one of my favourites, we have Malfoy Manor. Isn't it grand? Imagine strolling the grounds of Malfoy Manor, it's so ostentatious and slithering and stately. Also, I'm wondering which one Draco's bedroom is, or let's be honest with us, like Lucius Malfoy too. Hello! 
Next we have Harry and Hermione's hideout in the Deathly Hallows. Now this is Malham Cove in North Yorkshire which is a place very very close to my heart. Not only do I love it from Harry Potter, I actually just love Yorkshire anyway, it's God's own country as they say. I regularly find myself going to Yorkshire on Google because I live in Canada and can't physically get there. Obviously if I was a real witch I'd just apparate or use some kind of port key, but for now I've got the next best thing. Just look at those sweeping landscapes, like Voldemort, beware, you may be a dark wizard, but you'll never capture the spirit of Yorkshire. Another one I love is a Slytherin. We've got the route to Snape's dungeon. My favourite lesson at Hogwarts would so have been potions. Absolutely, I would have loved potions. I think it's because I like cooking in real life, and potions is kind of like magical cooking with fun results. Hogwarts students walked along this hallway as they got ready to learn how to bottle fame, brew glory, and even put a stopper on death. Here lies the secrets to Felix Felicis. The corridor can be strolled on on Google Maps and it's actually Lecoq Abbey which is found south of Chippenham. Finally, where better to end our virtual tour than at Hogwarts itself. A lot of the Hogwarts exterior shots were filmed at Olnwick Castle which you can look around on on Street View. You don't even just have to stand back like you do with Malfoy Manor, you can walk amongst the castle. Now this makes me think a lot of Quidditch practice, I can imagine them flying over here and it's very very exciting for me to be able to stroll around. I love this. Exactly, who needs the Marauders? We've got Google Maps and this was even just a few places, there are loads more. If you would like to see more then let me know if you want a part 2 in the comments section down below. Also, can you imagine, this is 2018 but imagine in a few years when things get virtual and we've all got oculus rifts, we could like actually go to Hogwarts and walk around these places which for me is kind of what I'm living for. That and the day I kind of get my letter to Hogwarts. Maybe like a witch or wizarding university where you can learn things because I'm not 11 anymore. Good, great. So do let me know your favourite place in the wizarding world of Harry Potter and have you found it on Google Maps? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also just give us some house pride, Slytherin love forever and ever. I am the sassiest Slytherin on the internet and I will see you beauties in the next video. Time for me to puff out, love you, hit that thumbs up button, bye.